Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect of the Day. We're jumping back into some more All the Mods 7 to the Sky. Now, of course, you may be wondering, what do I have on my head? What, what is this? Well, it is a turtle shell that I ended up getting from a boss that spawned in my base. Um, and killed me. It did kill me, but I got revenge on it and I got its helmet. Unfortunately, it was while I was actually working on cleaning up my setup over here and moving things back. I redid all of this, moved everything back, got everything nice and in line with uh, with the walls to make things look a little bit nicer. And it killed me. But this thing gives me 11% total speed, which if I take this off, I feel so slow. And when I put it on, I am much faster. This is really nice for getting around the base. But yeah, if you were wondering what's on my head, now you know. Now today, I want to focus on mobility and being able to move around. So this helmet was actually kind of nice, but I would like to make today the first tier of jetpack to be able to get around my base a little bit easier and also make adventuring a lot smoother moving forward too. I also am going to be getting into our first magic mod, Ars Nouveau. I do have a quick tip though, right before we get started with this, if you want to fix your drawer network and make it look better and, and where it's not actually a big dark blob, well, follow these quick steps. So to fix this issue, all you have to do is open up your configs folder that is within your Minecraft instance that you're working with, and you're gonna want to find Forge Client, which is this right here, Forge Client, you're gonna open that up. Now, of course, you may have to select it and open it up with your text editor of choice, but what you wanna change is this line right here where it says experimental forge light pipeline enable, and by default, it's set to false, but all you have to do is change that to true, and then make sure you save and restart your mod pack, and your lighting will be fixed just like mine. And once that's all done, it should look nice like this. Look at that, how nice is that? where we don't have any blending. It's gonna do that for all machines and it should even fix your sieves, which I know sieves had an issue when put together as well. Also, one quick thing I almost forgot to mention about this functional storage is this configuration tool. You can go ahead and shift right click it, click with it and it basically acts as all the keys did that were available with regular storage drawers. So you can see we swap mode, hide show renders items. We can uh, unshow un the, uh, or show the, the uh, modifiers that are on them. And we also have swap mode for locking and you can right click this and you can see there's no locks. If I right click this again, you notice there's a little tiny lock on there. And now these are all locked. So if we pull all the items out, they'll still maintain their filtered item. Now I mentioned jetpacks and uh, well, jetpacks are gonna actually require us to get into alloys because they're all based on alloys. Um, and our first starter one is going to start us with bronze. And then we move on to Invar and Electrum and Signalium and then Enderium. Um, these are going to be things that are easily made. At least bronze is going to be pretty easily made. And uh, let's talk about how we're going to, to make this an easy process. First of all, we're going to get into immersive engineering. Well, sort of. All we need is some sand. Actually, we don't need too much of this. All we need is enough to make eight kiln blocks. So eight kiln blocks it is. Just like that. And then we're going to need an immersive hammer. Bam. And right here, we have ourselves a kiln um and this is a very very simple very very simple machine to set up so it looks just like this and then you right click it with a hammer and it turns it into an alloy kiln um now this has does some special things um the main thing it does is alloy that's, that's really what it's made to do um and i believe you can use any fuel down at the bottom but what we're going to need is copper and tin to make this alloy so if we throw these together, it's gonna to take three to one, I believe, three copper to one tin, I think, to make bronze. And we just throw some coal in there. Can't believe we already have this much coal. We're gonna put that to use here in a second. But yeah, this right here is going to get us this bronze, which we are gonna need for this jetpack. Everything else is pretty simple. It is just iron and redstone. So I'm pretty excited to be able to make at least a tier one jetpack so I don't have to climb with blocks anymore. That's gonna be so nice. Now, while that is processing, let's talk about Ars Nouveau. Yes, the mod that I finally figured out how to kind of pronounce. Uh, it's Just call it Ars from now on. It's literally Ars, but it is a fantastic 
magic mod to get into and can do so much for us. Let's get started. Now, the first thing we're gonna need to get into this mod and, in, and also get a, uh, a sort of guidebook is this right here. We need to make ourselves a book, which is pretty simple at this point. Make every single tool or every single basic tool, I should say, um, including a sword. There we go. And this will grant us our novice spell book. Very nice, right? Um, and so by default, it does tell us how to open this up. It says press V to select. Um, I don't think that opens it, but that opens up a guidebook. To open it, we need to set a keybind. I went ahead and set mine to button four, and then to open that scroll wheel, of course, for us is just to hit B. So let's go ahead and open this book up. Bam. Now, from the start, here is the documentation, which is really nice that it is built in, and there is so much to learn here. So much knowledge, <laughs> the, uh, the wealth of knowledge is all here. Um, but I'm gonna show you sort of the kind of fast track way of getting started with this mod. First of all, let's go ahead and make our first spell because we do have the ability to do that. Let's go ahead and set this to touch and then we'll set it to break and we'll name this pick. And we'll go ahead and click create. And now on our first bar, we have pick. And it's gonna do exactly what you think it's gonna do. It's literally going to break blocks. It is a pickaxe. It is a multi-tool. It works on dirt. It works on this material. It, I mean, it works on wood, as you can see, blocks. It is fantastic. And uh, that's just the first part of it. Um, if we open this up, we can even make another one right here that is a projectile and break. And this is going to be another break. Uh, we can say shoot to break. We can create that. And uh, this right here, if we select it, will now shoot a projectile that will then break the block. Later on, we can set it up so that way when the block is hit and broken, it also puts it directly into our inventory, which is really helpful for things that are far away. Hey, looky there, our bronze is all done. Awesome. Now, um, I was talking a little bit about Ars Nouveau. Now, at the moment, we're still kind of stuck. In a, we're at a little bit of an impasse because we do need source gems in order to get more into this. I don't know if source gems are gonna be something that is available in the Twilight Forest. I'm hoping so. If not, it's gonna be kind of confusing getting into this mod. It does say right here, obtained by placing Lapis or Amethyst in an imbuement chamber, but I'm pretty sure the imbuement chamber requires you to have 500 source at least. And we have no way of getting that yet. Now in the book, if this is true, it says the imbuement chamber will passively accumulate source or recipes. That's what it says. And it says, or draw from source jars two blocks away. If it just passively generates, then I need to get this thing set up ASAP. And to do that, before we make the jetpack, we are gonna get this set up. I am going to need, ah, there we go, a market from farming with blockheads. All we need is some red dye, which we definitely should have. So now that we have a market, let's go ahead and place this bad boy down. It is, it is kind of a funny thing what this does. So, be prepared to laugh. Yep, swap o -matic. <laughs> How are you doing? And uh, within this, we have tons of stuff. We can buy so many trees of all different types. Ooh, this is a really nice tree. Um, but one of the trees that we definitely need are the ones that are from Ars Nouveau. I'm gonna go with the blue one. They're all gonna be the same wood type. Put our emerald in and bam, we have ourselves an archwood tree. And I'm hoping this is enough space to grow it. It is. <laughs> and look at this beauty. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I love these trees. So let's hope that we can harvest it all. There we go. And I need this particular tree uh, for its wood. It requires it for the crafting for the R stuff. So let's try it. Let's go ahead and make the imbuement chamber and we're gonna see if this is gonna work. Now, all I need is Lapis to get our first bit of source. And I'm just gonna place it here for right now. And it's supposed to passively generate source. As you can see, it's it's kind of doing some stuff right now. I'm gonna place that in there. And as you can see, there goes crafting progress. It is actually working. And so this is going to take a little bit of time. And this is how we're gonna generate our crystals early on. 
Now, while that's doing its thing, I'm going to go ahead and get my jetpack on. And uh, so I believe with these, say we need one, two, three, and that's four. So four, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we need exactly 11 of these coils to make a jetpack. And then we need exactly five of these bronze batteries or energy cells, one bronze capacitor, and that is it for this jetpack, other than needing power. Ah, first, this is, this is our first flight. Um, and let's see, do we get anything special for that? Just some XP? Very nice. All right, so to charge this up, I can literally toss it in this battery and it doesn't have a lot of power storage, which is fine. It doesn't have a whole lot, but it's going to get us where we need to go. Now, by default, the engine is off. We have to set up a few configs for this or a few hotkeys to turn the engines on and also turn it on and off hover mode and also adjust the throttle. Now, by default, the throttle is the comma and period key. Uh, and being able to adjust the throttle is really nice, especially later on when these jetpacks become pretty powerful. So let's see how nice this jetpack is. Look at that. Now, if I toggle in hover mode, it's not the greatest hover in the world. We do descend very quickly, but really I just want this to be able to get up to high spaces like this. Now the throttle, even early on, I'm probably gonna knock this down a whole bunch, like 60 seems to be more creative speed. Yeah, that's about as close as I'm gonna get. All right, looks like we do have ourselves our first source gem. How cool is that? I need two though, to speed up the source production. So let's go ahead and make another one. And then we can get started with this mod. Now, since we're gonna be needing quite a bit of this stuff, I might as well go ahead and set up a semi-automation for it, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and get a hopper. And the hopper, let's see, make sure I grab that out properly. Um, if, if we go ahead and set up this imbuement chamber with a hopper on top and a hopper on bottom, what ends up happening is it just goes straight through the thing and then the, uh, the outputs aren't filtered. So there is a way that I can hopefully fix this by putting an item interface on this and then taking a chest and filtering this. So if we grab a barrel, that might actually be a little easier. So if we grab a barrel, we set that here, we can actually set up an item exporter filter over here. And now we can put a hopper on top and hopefully be able to say, hey, don't pull out lapis, only pull out source gems. And to do that, let's go ahead and take this. And we also need a variable card from Integrated Dynamics. So let's grab our variable and we will define our variable. And what we will say is item, I believe we have to be very specific with this, and we'll say this, and then put the filter in, and now the variable card is set to item source gem. And we should be able to say export item, this one right here, and it should only export source gems. So it should pull this out once it turns into source gem, We'll find that out if this actually drops down to 62. And it worked. Look at that, a source gem is in there. This is actually pulling out. Ah, oh, that is perfect. So let's go ahead and craft a few things that we're actually gonna need from ours to kind of start producing our own source. And this is going to be the volcanic source link. And the reason why I wanna go with this one is because we can just spin coal to create source. Of course, there are several others, that it does mention in the book. There's a couple of different ways that you can generate source. You can look in the book for that. Way we're doing it is going to be with volcanic. Now, I do need another thing, and that is an R's pedestal. Um, and I need this pedestal to be able to feed our, uh, our coal to this uh, source link. Also, I'm gonna need a source jar this is how we are going to collect said source. So let's grab a source jar and let's get this bad boy set up. Um, it doesn't take too much to get this going. Let's see, a hopper is actually a great solution and then we are, of course need coal. You didn't see anything. All right, so let's set this down. Volcanic source link. And then we have an arcane pedestal that I can go ahead and place here. And then we can actually go ahead and place a source jar right here. And it, it just needs to be kind of close. 
But as you can see, if I place this here, this is going to get consumed and is going to shoot some of the, uh, the source that it generates from that coal right into this. And I should be able to place a hopper directly on top and then just throw the coal in. And this is going to continue to consume the coal. And as you can see, that was 7%. That added 6% to this source tank, which this right here, I, I think is one of the faster ways of generating a lot of source. Now source, of course, is the power of this mod. It, it's how we're gonna be able to craft all of the future stuff and upgrades for our spell book. Now, since I played with this mod, it's, it's been a little while since I've played with it. And so I'm familiar with the 116 version and, and before. So there are a lot of new things and changes that have happened. One being the scribes table. This is something new to be able to create glyphs, which are what we need to upgrade and to add spells to our book. Um, so the scribes table, how does this work? Let's take a look. Um, I guess we place the items on here because there is no interface. There's got, it's gotta be, it's gotta be how you do it. So this must have taken the place of the glyph press, which was how you were able to make them before. Um, I'm also searching up tier one because we only have a novice spell book, which means we can only use tier one spells in this book and we can only learn said spells. Um, so for example, to learn ignite, apparently we need flint and steel and it looks like three coal and it says XP levels required three. And then we have the glyph ignite. Let's try it out. So according to the book, the way that I actually interact with this scribes table is by right clicking my novice spell book on it. And we can see here's ignite. And I guess I go ahead and select that. And as you can see, it is taking source. Oh no, it took, it took the coal off this pedestal. So I need a pedestal nearby in order for this to function. Ah, and it's waiting for my other one to work. So I need to put this on there. Oh, now that's cool. And as you can see, there's the glyph and I right click the glyph and it says I unlocked Ignite. Oops, <laughs> broke it. But I unlocked Ignite, which means I can open this up and now we can create a spell that is touch and ignite. And we can call it flame. And we can change the color of this one as well to orange. Save it on this. I believe we just hit save. And now it has some orange particle effects, but it ignites using a little bit of our mana, as you can see in our bar in the bottom left. Now, since most glyphs require four pedestals and also a little bit of experience, as you've seen, it does cost some experience. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up the four here. As you can see, that should work. And there are many glyphs, many glyphs to learn. Um, we can take a look. These are all tier. Some of them are tier one. These are at least ordered by tier one here and move forward all the way down, all the way to tier three to learn. So we can click tier one and we can see amplifying is on there. And then we also, that's gonna require a diamond pick and three levels. So we definitely need some way to generate experience before long. Now, of course, I wanna be able to learn all of these, but some of the ones that I want right away is, go, is going to be the item pickup one. So if we go to tier one and I have item pickup, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now I need to put two hoppers on here and you can see it's going to select those and finish them out. And I went from 16 to 15. So it's not taking like three levels exactly, I don't believe, because it didn't seem like it. We'll be able to find out more because I also want to be able to get the light, which is the conjure mage light. Go ahead and do this. It's going to require a torch and a lantern. And we went from 15. So we only lost one level. So it's when it says three levels, I don't quite know what it's meaning, unless it's mean like three base levels and it's going off of something else. But there we go. We have these two that we can learn. And now if we open up our book and I go to four, this is where things are really nice. I could create one where if I touch the position, it will set a light or I can do a projectile and conjure mage light. And then I can make the mage light any color. How about white? 
and we save. Um, let's see, we'll do, actually, I think we have to save this first. So we'll do project mage light and we'll say light. Create, make sure we set the color, which is to white. And now when I fire this, we should get some sort of light source where it hits. And of course, there it is. This is the light source and it's gonna go right where I aim it. How cool is that? Now on the other setup, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna have this change to pickup. So we can actually modify these. I can have break and then I can have item pickup afterwards and save and same for item pickup here, save. And now what should happen is whenever I shoot from a distance to this block, it should pick the block up and put it right in my inventory. This is fantastic. This is why this is so powerful. Now I have one more thing left to do, and that is to, of course, get the drawb or the get the the wardrobe uh, for this mod, which is going to help us a lot. And for that, I need an arcane core. I also need an enchanting apparatus, and that's basically it. We already have pedestals, so this right here is how we do arcane uh, enchanting crafting or arcane crafting, I would call it. So we have this right here. I can place down and then this goes on top. Now this is going to need source. So uh, I place items on the pedestals. It detects it. There's also an item goes in here and it's like a multi block crafting sort of thing or like a multi item crafting. Let me show you. So what I'm going for is this mage bloom seed. As you can see, it's going to require source and seeds. So let's grab a seed for right now because we should be able to use bone mill for everything else. Let's make sure we have some source gems. And what we can do is we will place the four source gems on the pedestals. I hope this one's close enough. And then we'll place a seed here. And as you can see, it is going to do the crafting. Now it is pulling source from this area. So you do have to have source. And once it's done, boom, we have ourselves a mage bloom seed. And now this mage bloom seed, I'm gonna go ahead and hoe the, uh, the ground over here. I think, oh, that doesn't, this X is a hoe, right? No, no, that comma should work. It's just, this wasn't dirt. Yeah, that should work. The, uh, the matog. <laughs> I was thinking for a second, that should be working. Now with this, I should be able to bone mill this. And there we go. I am gathering up all of this mage bloom. This mage bloom is going to be used to make mage bloom fiber, which then allows me to make this awesome outfit. And there we go. We have ourselves a novice mage set, just like that. And I'm probably, now that I have this, I'm probably gonna be taking this off. Uh, the diamond armor can go, and we'll have our helmet, and then I will put this in the cosmetic slot and turn it on, and there we go. Look at what we look like. Now I know our chest piece isn't giving us the bonus, but we are definitely now a mage. Look how cool we are. So this is definitely gonna help us in our quest to go to the Twilight Forest, which is actually gonna happen very soon. This will also help us be able to attack things at a distance when we go into the nether again. Oh, I, I still don't think I'm prepared for the nether, but yeah, we should be able to protect ourselves a little bit better. I think we can even get fire resistance with this mod. So ah, that would be kind of nice. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you learned something new, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also check out the Discord. Discord.gg forward slash chosen architect is where you can join our amazing community. Now, of course, speaking of Discord, I would love to thank the sponsor of today's video. And then my friends is gonna be a huge thank you going out to Botakin. Thank you so much for your amazing support on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting this channel. Thank you so much. And of course, guys, like I said, join the Discord. Click that subscribe button. Give this video a huge thumbs up. If you love the video, comment something down below. If you hated the video, comment something down below. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.